Thank you very much. Our uh, introduction almost sounds the same as the slogan for the conference, Smart Sustainable. So we feel very welcome, welcome here when we walked in yesterday uh, because that is completely our DNA, smart and sustainable. And, um, and also the speakers that was uh, talking yesterday and today, the whole message the last two days has been resonating um, so strongly with us as a company. So I'm um, very happy to be here. Thank you. Um, Dr. Bota said yesterday that um, it's the young people and new thinking that uh, will change the world. So I uh, thought it good to invite, even though I'm already younger, I think, than the other speakers, to invite even my younger colleague, um, Stefan van der Merwe, to, um, to share some, uh, to some insights. So um, I'll introduce him. Stefan, you can come up and, um, and maybe run us through a couple of uh, slides. Thank you very much, David. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, happy to be here. Um, first of all, <laughs> it's the green one, right? I'm pressing the right button. Okay. Ek druk die groen. Ek denk jy moet dan terug reverse met die rooie. Ja, helemaal. Yeah, I think, guys, we're at the end. This is actually the last slide. Could we maybe start at the first one? Generally, we like to move from beginning to end. There we go, there we go, there we go. First of all, by a quick show of hands, how many of you have ever received a confusing invoice for the pallets that you pull? Anyone? <laughs> or perhaps even not known exactly how many pallets your company is pooling, exactly where they are on your site, how many are at your client sites? I'm sure that even if there aren't people here today who deal with this problem themselves, you at least are aware of this issue. The technology that we use on a day-to-day -day basis tends to get better every couple of years. Think about your cell phone, right? Even the car that you drive has changed a lot over the years. This is a photo of the leading pallet in the market around the 1940s. And this is the leading pallet in the market today. <laughs> I'm sure you see where I'm going with this. The technology that we use today um, hasn't really changed a lot in terms of pallets. And, um, sorry, <laughs> today, but today we do have stronger, higher quality and more sustainable pallets than ever before. However, the way in which we manage them hasn't really changed a lot since the early 1940s. Now, that's essentially the equivalent of doing your laundry by hand every week. And why would you be doing that when you've got a perfectly good washer at home? David's gonna tell us a little bit more about the history of pallets and how we got to the situation where we are today, the lack of innovation, and how we are aiming to change that today. Thanks. Thank you, Thanks, Stefan. <laughs> Yeah, so it's clear, things do change and it evolves. Um, with, with pallets, the evolution was unfortunately very slow. Um, it started with the forklift was actually first to be developed, and that was between 1915 and 1917. And that led to the adaption of, they called it skids, and we still use skids, but it, it, it evolved into what became today's pallet in 1925. The first pallet was patented, um, and the efficiencies of using the pallet truck and the, and the pallet together you, uh, moving heavy loads led to a widespread adoption of the, the pallet and the pallet truck, and very quickly um, there was a lot of pallets being used, so all over, um, but that's where the problem arrived. How are we managing all these pallets? Uh, because all of a sudden, pallets were the thing to use, um, but they were ending up like this. Um, 
unfortunately, uh, oh, well, that problem led us to a good solution, um, and that was pallet pooling. So pallet pooling enables the transfer and share and reuse of pallets. And that worked actually very well. It solved the problem to a certain extent. But it was simpler days. It wasn't the days of mega DCs, complex supply chains, trucks arriving and uh, uh, leaving every second 365 days a, um, a year. So um, eventually, that manual system wasn't working um, as good as um, it should. And again, we ended up seeing this all over. Um, and I think that's the problem we want to address today. Um, we've seen significant improvements um, with pallets, especially the material that we, that we use to manufacture pallets. And I think that's why we're here today. We're now collecting plastics repurposing them, remanufacturing, and today we actually have strong, durable pallets, and Impact is a, is a good example of the, the pallet that they've got in the market. It is a strong, durable pallet that can, um, that can handle heavier loads, it can have you a longer lifespan. So we do have fantastic innovation today available. We do have that Tesla car, but unfortunately we're still driving the donkey car. Um, and I think one of the reasons why we haven't moved from the broken pallet that constantly needs repairs and that's, uh, that needs to be replaced and refurbished all along is um, the way we manage pallets. Um, unfortunately, that again has, has not seen a lot of innovation. It's still a manual process. It still requires a human input to transfer the pallet from one to another. And uh, as we all know, as soon as you need um, the human input, mistakes happen. And with pallets, unfortunately, it happens very often. Um, so we're sitting again with a big problem. Um, there's the, the fantastic new pallets that we've got today. That is the, the uh, uh, photo of the impact pallet. So these pallets are available. Um, and these, uh, yeah, it's a circular product. Uh, made, remanufactured, chipped at the end of time, uh, remolded. Um, so these products really have an opportunity to change and have a fantastic sustainability effect on our, on our supply chains. But unfortunately, the management is still a problem. Um, but again, I think this is what will have the effect that the pallet truck had on the pallet 100 years ago is what IoT will have on pallet management today. Um, IoT is the Internet of Things. It describes a physical network of uh, objects that can communicate and talk to each other, share information. Um, what that means to a pallet is that you can have a, a tracker embedded in the pallet. So that tracker is securely installed, tamper-proof, totally embedded in the pallet, automatically installed, by the way. Um, and it allows the pallet to communicate small pieces of information, movement, temperature, uh, location, and time. And what that gives you is that you will always know where your pallets are, how many you've got, is my invoice correct, am I being billed for the wrong pallet, am I losing pallets? Those are all problems of the past. So um, this, yeah, it is, it's something that we're very excited about. It, again, the data that, that will be generated will, um, will open up um, a lot of more, um, let me quickly see here, your ability to see the fluctuation of pallet use through your supply chain. You'll be better to predict product and pallet demand, uh, foresee these fluctuations and act on potential disruptions before they come problems and even calculate cycle time. So the information, I think we're so early, we don't even know how we will actually use all this information that we'll be generating, AI, machine learning, they'll be actually managing these pallets um, automatically. Um, the, the good thing um, of, of the tracker is actually now, the cost of the tracker is being offset by the cheaper running cost of the durable plastic pallet. 
So you're getting the advantages, but you're not necessarily paying more because you can now actually use this durable, efficient pallet that doesn't break. And if you're not losing it, you'll be actually getting the lifespan. So it's a win-win situation um, um, for all the users. So um, yeah, we're very excited. SmartLoad is, um, is implementing um, these pallets into um, impact pallets. We've got um, fantastic projects running um, currently and with um, a lot of um, potential that's developing in the next six to 12 months. Um, but yeah, we're very excited and um, we're seeing a lot of um, interest in the market. And uh, if we think about uh, sustainability way is um, for us, yeah, plastic is the way forward. Um, trees, we love trees, we love wood, but I think wood should be, um, should be a tree and not necessarily end up in one of those photos that we saw earlier in the presentation. Um, so, yeah, that's the, that's the presentation. I think if there's any questions, I'm happy to, to answer some questions. I think we finished earlier than we, uh, than we wanted. But um, if there's maybe a question. Yes, yeah, the pallets are in use. A plastic pallet is, is not a new technology. It's actually, it's a, it's a solved problem. It has been used in Europe uh, for many years. Um, and now, luckily, in South Africa, we mani we're manufacturing local plastic pallets up to European standard. I think the pallet we're talking about, I don't, we, we all impact people, but it's an impact pallet and it was designed uh, on a, you know, by European, it's a, I think it's a European standard quality product that we're getting in South Africa now. Yes, yeah. So, yeah, so the tracker is, uh, is in use with the pallet. I think the, the, for, for us, the, the challenge was actually how do we embed the pallet into the tracker securely? And that took some time. Um, that problem we've solved now, and we've got trackers at one of the big retailers, big industrial companies. Um, and yeah, SmartLoad has been operating since 2017. So we've been rolling out these pallets into our current and our older customers that we um, that was serviced uh, with our technology. So yeah, it's working and it's available. Yeah, good question. Thank you. Um, Again, and I think it was addressed yesterday, is the, the, the value and the scarcity of recycled material. Um, and um, and, and uh, I think much more clever people here uh, sitting in the audience than me with that. I think it's a, a polymer specialist. But um, what, uh, how has it been described to me is that um, the Virgin does give you a little bit more stronger, but what we've seen from our customers is the the want to use recycled material and um, the ability of the pallet to use recycled material. So at this stage, we're doing a mix and Impact is, uh, is deciding on that mix to get the necessary strength, but to use the maximum amount of um, recycled material. And um, if the prediction that we've got uh, for the adoption of these pallets in the next five years, I think we're gonna struggle to find enough recycled material, hopefully. <laughs> to produce all the pallets we want. Yes. What percentage? Yes. Yeah. Um, Yes, so, so maybe I'm, I just want to address your cost. So the, the cost of running a plastic pallet is actually over the long term cheaper. It's just the initial cost uh, that's the hindrance. Um, and then the customer is, um, yeah, they, it's difficult for them to jump to the thing because the risk of loss of the expensive asset. So that's where the IoT tag ca comes in, is that now you totally uh, virtually eliminating your loss risk uh, of the expensive asset 
and you'll be able to run the asset through the, um, through the whole life cycle. So um, over the long term, and even if you look at from daily rental, the plastic pallet works out as a cheaper option. Um, that's the one question. And the other question is when we started um, the business, um, we couldn't buy plastic pallets in South Africa, and we imported, and most of those pallets were virgin. Um, we started the business focusing on raw materials into food and pharmaceutical production um, uh, facilities, and there the demand for virgin plastic was more. Uh, it was in high care sensitive areas with direct food contact, and where we moving the business now into open retail and whether the, the, the demand is 100% recycled. And um, the pallets that we introducing to the market, we haven't bought virgin pallets, um, I think, in the last three years. So, and we're pushing the agenda, well, well, we're pushing recycle because from our side it makes sense, yeah. And the what market. Are you seeing, yeah, what are mm. you seeing in the market trends? Um, like all new technologies, it's, um, it's a mind shift to make, to change. Um, I've recently read, uh, if you want to change from one solution to the next, you can't be uh, 10 and 20% better, you must be 80% better. So uh, we really putting something on the table that's significantly better. Um, it's been a progress to get the, the pricing, the service, but we're now at a stage where we're saying this um, solution that we're bringing is 80% better. And from a company perspective, we including local content, so we um, most uh, one of our big competitors is multinational, but we're trying to include being a local company, using a local manufactured pallet from recycled material, um, uh, pricing, service, so trying to tick all the boxes. Thanks, that was nice questions. Any more questions? No. Thank you very much. Yeah.